and uh, then we can move on to the next talk, which is about uh, Lodger Mesh, a decentralized mesh network powered by Riot. And uh, Jean-Pierre Dure is uh, going to talk about it. He is an embedded software programmer at uh, Lodger and works on um, Manet networks and particular AODV2 and um, Packet BB on 815.4G networks. And um, yeah, he's going to tell us how they are using these technologies on Riot to um, create open and usable internet connections on sites where communication um, is difficult in terms of censorship or um, bad access. So Jean-Pierre, the floor is yours. Are you here? Yeah, hi. Hi. Hello, everyone. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we are seeing your screen and can hear you fine. Oh, okay. Well, we begin right now. Well, welcome everyone. Thanks for giving the time to hear me on my talk about Lotia Mesh, a decentralized mesh network powered by Riot. So I'm a small introduction, who I am. I am Jean-Pierre today. I do work as an embedded software developer for Lotia IO. And who is Lucha IO? Lucha IO is a small non-profit organization made by Bitcoin Venezuela to create the software protocol and hardware for a small interconnected network of devices to allow sharing data. So sharing data on Jean-Pierre, we cannot hear you anymore. Jean-Pierre, can you, can you still hear us? Apparently not. Can the rest of you still hear me? Yes, yeah. the rest of us hears you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not just it's individually, we often fail fail out of WebEx audio and then get rejoined, but it looks like he's completely gone. No, we can't hear you. But we have his video. I guess this is the equivalent of having problems with the Beamer. Yeah, something like that. Can you hear me, guys? Yes. Yes. Uh, why not? So I'm seeing me frozen. Yeah. Let me check again this way. Uh, okay. So you can see the screen, right? Yes.
Yes. Yeah, yeah, we see your screen. Okay, let me continue. So let's start again. Uh, sorry for the little convenience. So. Welcome everyone. Thanks for having the time to hear me on my talk about Lotion Mesh, a decentralized mesh network powered by Riot. Be prepared for 20 minutes of talk. If they, well, a little bit. Um, and as for introduction, who I am, I am jean today. I do work for, as an embedded software developer for Loja IO. Um, and who is Loja IO? It is an open source and open hardware non profit organization made by Bitcoin Venezuela to create the software protocols and hardware needs for a decentralized mesh of interconnected devices to allow communications on remote areas without needing a power grid nor internet. So, why Lucia Mesh? Lucia Mesh was born with the main idea of having a network of devices that could be used without needing a network and internet connection or having a power grid. So, it could be used on remote areas. And for example, on Venezuela, the country where I work from, where I was born from, suffered a national blackout. This left the entire country without communications. In situations like this, sending a message, contacting family was nearly impossible. The cellular network didn't work. Um, most of the country and backup energy was non existent. On this image, taken by NASA, we can just see with one day merging, one of these whole country changed from a shiny light to just one state having electricity. This, to this day, this keeps happening there, um, communications is very hard. So, the solution. After Tabacow, Loja committed to create a battery-powered handheld device to make communication easier on situations like that. Uh, it should have the following characteristics. It should be a small handheld device. It should be battery powered. It also should be, should be efficient to keep computation and uh, will, will need to keep computations at a minimum for it to work on remote areas where electricity is intermittent. It also should be easily replicated using a spare parts for making a do it yourself version. So, how Riot helps here? Riot is the core that provides a powerful network stack and hardware abstractions. It supports a wide range of microcontrollers. It is, it, is, it is easily extendable using models and, of course, has a great community. Making contribution is very easy. And how does it work? In very simple terms, we use an ESP32 for the Wi-Fi network interface, an outer microcontroller, a CC1312 for the sub-1 gigahertz radio interface. It is, we have been working on its support on Riot, however, it is still compatible, compatible with other types of transceivers. We choose to use two microcontrollers because we need to keep things a little bit flexible for initial, Prototypes. The Wi Fi network interface is used to communicate with a mobile phone and making communications easier when connection easier when connecting a phone or a computer. The network stack. The network stack is very simple. It uses a six low pane EPUE6 UDP stack from Riot. In addition, we use PRC5444 for the transfer of the routing protocol. The routing protocol views the on development version of ad hoc on demand distance vector routing protocol, version two. And um, backs up with a manager. A manager stands for mobile, mobile ad hoc network. This type of network has been in research for a very long time. And um, as the name says, allows for mobile, mobile communications 
without breathing when you move when you move around. For example, you move from one location to another, you can still participate on the network as long as you can reach another node. Generally, a managed network does not require an internet to work, and by design, it is hard pro it, it is hard to provide internet in a manet. And what about the routing protocol? It stands for ad hoc on demand distance versus ad hoc on demand distance vector protocol. It's not the same as the original IODB because it is IPv4 only. It only finds routes by flooding code requests on the route if found uh, the no destination sends a route response. Uh, when we need a road, we only ask for it when we need it. When multiple road reports arrive, we only select the one with the less hops to the destination. So this way we can be very efficient without sacrificing performance or anything. It is well, on, as, I, as I said before, on top of RFC 54444. Taking a look at the routing. For example, in this example, John wants to send a message to Jane. John proceeds to flow road requests to all the nodes. The red line denotes the road requests to all the nodes between John, John, and Jane. All nodes participate by resending the request and by verifying whether it is a duplicate request. This way, we don't keep infinitely sending road requests. Jane, once sending the request, she gives a response to John. We can here see how Jane sends a root response to the blue, to the blue path, because that's the most short path to John. However, another road could be used, which is this one in the down in the down of the image. However, this is only selected by the number of hops. And this is a cancel number, which is some sort of like a timestamp, and only the road, newest road is used. Okay, but how does this work with Riot? This network interface on Riot provides a callback for providing routing information. It is the route info callback. It informs us when we need to find a road for a packet. When a packet, when we send a packet with the GNRC stack, it looks for roads on the NIB, NIB, sorry. And when a road is in front there, it asks for a road, for a road request. We then buffer the packet because we need to find the road as it, as it is on demand. And when the road is found, we later send it when we have the road. In case we don't have the road, we use the road packet, which shouldn't happen too much. Um, how IPVC addresses are used? Each node genera generates a random unique address saved for later persistent usage. All addresses are uh, used on unique local address prefix, or in other words, an uh, if C00 with just 16 bits of prefix. Unique local addresses are unroadable on the public internet. These addresses, however, can be routed on a private network. In general terms, it's sort of, with some exception, equivalent to the IPv4 private, private address ranges. Although, as I said, it is not the same. Um, for summing up, Security challenges for the future. Security on a public network is somewhat difficult as we plan to use Lucia Mesh on the public so everyone can participate. And uh, security is a very high concern there. Uh, for example, sending as an graph, for example, jamming is, jamming is an issue on the radio space, airing interferences could be, inter could be problematic. And um, we don't have away from preventing this. Anyone can set up a jammer somewhere. And um, this is where a man should solve this problem by finding routes to other nodes. Impersonation attacks are possible. For example, a node can use the IPv6 address for of another node 
and it will be hard to notice. Uh, this can be solved using cryptography, however, it's still a research camp. We need this to receive this. Uh, generating an address, for example, of, of an elliptic curve, elliptic curve cryptography, publicate and incorporation validation of the routing protocol. And further, we should validate how it, the routing protocol message, as this can be a malicious actor can generate an um, invalid message to damage their routing protocol. And um, maybe a working prototype, yes. This is still being worked, however, I am only the developer of the firmware, but and the electrical electronic engineer is still doing the work. Yes, and it's still working. Some details are being fully published. Of course, a development version with some other features is being developed with more fine headers for testing and using on IoT applications. It's a, I mean, it has to uh, a debugger and so it's about to debug and use use as a general development platform. Finally, I know this is very a very long short um, presentation. Um, it might not be my best language as I don't speak um, English naturally. I speak Spanish, but anyway. Thanks for hearing me, and um, very much thanks to all of the Riot Summit 2020 organizers. The project main repository can be found at this link on this Wednesday with Reveal GS and English again. So, very much thanks, and thanks for hearing me again. Yeah, thank you so much for your talk, and uh, let's give the speaker a virtual applause. And um, there was already the first question in the, in the chat from Philip regarding the RFC of AWV V2. So, um, Jean Pierre, you want to, uh, or Philip, you want to, to ask a question? Yes, see if, if someone has a question, I can answer it. Yeah, yeah, quite quite simple. Just uh, if there is an RFC for that. Um, to answer the question from Emmanuel, yes, we are working on a known implementation of ERC five four four four. I think you might work on that standard, but I am implementing a more lightweight version for right. What role is to use uh, the shows of reactive? Well, do not have much control packet traveling around there, so we don't consume too much bandwidth. So, um, I, I was wondering, so I remember um, a couple of years ago, um, Lotte was working on um, AUDV V2 and the um, packet PB stuff for Riot. Did you, uh, or could you reuse some of the stuff or did you did you start from, from scratch or what's, uh, what was your approach? Yes, I saw the lot of implementation of LVB2 for Riot. I thought it has been quite outdated. We ported it to the latest Riot version and it still works but needs a uh, more likely implementation of ERC 5444 because right now is very heavy for a microcontroller and makes more possible. Okay, and then there was another question by Matthias that was already answered in the in the chat. <laughs> so about the product launch that is apparently planned for early 2021. And then there's another question by Emmanuel. The size of the network we plan as the bandwidth is very limited. We plan to have almost on a single network 64 nodes, and that is still a lot for a very urban area. Uh, but we plan to receive more in that area so we can simulate what size of the network we produce. And yes, we to know. Okay. another metric as 
the, instead of the hub count, however, is still very hard and can be used for attackers for using invalid information. For example, using link quality information is still uh, very special as you have to trust other nodes in some case because you need to send across all the network the metric information. And if some, some malicious actor change a little bit of the metric, it can be uh, just we have a root implementation in well and it was a project for experimenting with Rust and we plan to use it. However, I make it as a prototype to make a C version more lightweight. So without using dynamic memory or anything. And I would like to thank Lowden for that work because the initial implementation she made is very good. And if we use, still use as a as a good base, the truck. Well, we use it depends basically on the quality of the code we have right now, and it's not very good, but it's very important. And uh, there's a lot of work being done. But initial results and. Um, very well, very well, were very good, and we could use it to send uh, heavy data over a less one node in the, uh, the intermediary. It's still being worked. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, and we are surprisingly very. Um, Good in time, and um, yeah, thanks again, also for the interesting Q and A.